Hello everyone. Recently, I got my hands on this three-phase power transformer from a deep vibrator for concrete laying. The downside is that its windings are made of aluminum wire, but the good thing is that the voltage of the secondary windings is about 36 volts. I thought, in general, to make a welding machine out of it. The output voltage is sufficient for normal arc ignition. Arc. Transformer welding machines are no longer relevant for many, as inverter ones are more compact and lightweight. But an undeniable advantage of transformer welding machines is their extremely high reliability and long-term constant load capacity. If everything is done correctly, the machine will be virtually indestructible. We will return to the power transformer a little later. We still need to reconnect the windings for operation in a single-phase network, as I don't have a three-phase one. The welding machine consists of two main parts, the power transformer and the welding current regulation system. If the machine is direct current, it also includes a rectifier. My task was to test a fairly popular welding current regulation circuit based on thyristors. It is right in front of you now. I searched for the original source for quite a long time. Presumably, the circuit was first published in an interesting book by Yuri Podolsky dedicated to welding and the design of welding machines. You can download this book online. If you're interested in welding, I highly recommend it. And this is not an advertisement at all that will come a bit later. In general, there are several ways to regulate welding current. Using a load ballast or resistance, switching taps on the primary winding of the transformer, but I don't have those and I'm not planning to rewind the transformer. And finally, the electronic method of regulation, usually with the help of a thyristor. Thyristor regulators are extremely reliable and have high efficiency due to the pulse regulation principle. And also, importantly, when adjusting the power, the output voltage of the welding machine without load remains unchanged, which means there will be a confident arc ignition in any range of output current. Power regulators are installed both at the input on the primary circuit and at the output after the secondary winding. The problem is that the principle of power adjustment using such a regulator is based on cutting off the initial sinusoidal signal, meaning parts of the sine wave are applied to the load. If the regulator is installed on the primary circuit, irregularly shaped pulses will go to the transformer, leading to the creation of a peculiar sound, additional vibration, and overheating of the windings. However, despite this, such systems work successfully with inductive loads. And if you have a good and reliable transformer, I think it's worth trying. The trick is that the currents in the input circuit are much lower, so the control element, a triac or thyristor, can be chosen with a lower current rating. In our case, the system is installed on the secondary circuit, directly controlling the welding current. There is also an advantage to this. In addition to adjusting the welding current, the system also acts as a rectifier. That is, by complementing the welding transformer with such a regulator, you get direct current welding with adjustable settings. In fact, it's a power regulator, the basic operation, of which I explained in the corresponding video. A link will be in the description. The circuit consists of an adjustable rectifier, which includes two diodes and two thyristors, and a thyristor control system. By the way, it can be anything, whether a dynaster, a neon lamp, or any other relaxation oscillator capable of generating control pulses for telescopes with adjustable settings. Frequency. In my case, the control system is powered by a separate low-power transformer with a secondary winding voltage of 24 to 30 volts and a current of at least 1 ampere. If desired, you can wind a coil with the necessary characteristics on the main power transformer and use it to power the control system. The circuit is assembled on a small printed circuit board, which can be downloaded along with the project's general archive via the link in the description. The thyristor in the control circuit can be any with a current of at least 1A. In my case, it's 10A, but there's no real reason for that, it was just available. The same goes for the diodes. 1A is enough, but having a current reserve never hurts. The upper regulator will allow you to set the limits of the output current. The second regulator adjusts the main welding current. 
You need to use wire wound variable resistors here, preferably 10 watts or more. Initially, I installed this kind of monster, but later replaced it with a less powerful one. It heats up, but doesn't overheat too much. Now, finally, let's consider the power rectifier. The diodes and thyristors I used in it, despite their monstrous appearance and excellent characteristics, were bought at a flea market, for literally next to nothing. Diodes of type V200 with a current of 200A. The reverse voltage depends on the index, in my case 1400V, but the thyristors are more powerful. T171-320, T171320 are rated for a current of up to 320A. The current in pulse mode can reach up to 10,000A. I think it's clear that the diodes and thyristors are capable of more. They won't burn out even a currents of 300 to 400A. Naturally, considering they are installed on their original heat sinks. Yes, and the power components were manufactured in the Soviet Union. But I think that's already understood. In other words, their specifications are not exaggerated by the manufacturers. Some might think that the components are not selected correctly. Diodes are rated at 200A, thyristors at 320. There's no need to worry. It will work without any problems. Another point regarding the V200 diodes. They have a somewhat non-standard lead arrangement. Typically, the substrate is the anode. Here, it's the opposite. The diode substrate is the cathode. The wire with the terminal is the anode. However, in the case of these thyristors, everything is standard. The substrate is the anode. The wire is the cathode. The only drawback of such a regulator is its large weight and size. Tin copper terminals are used for all power connections. These can be bought at a hardware store. Wires are 2 by 6 square millimeters in parallel. It's not much, of course, but at least they are copper. I didn't notice any overheating during operation that welding currents of 70 to 80A. The electrode holder was bought at the nearest hardware store. It feels like the developers, when creating this holder, were under the influence of something. It's inconvenient, made extremely poorly, but there were no others in the store. I was too lazy to go to another store. So, in the end, this is the holder we will have. Let's return to the transformer. As I mentioned earlier, it is three-phase. Each coil has its own primary and secondary winding. The central coil was excluded. The two outer coils are connected in parallel, both on the primary and secondary winding, for operation from a single-phase network. But during the experiments, it turned out that considering the losses, the rectifier voltage was insufficient for normal ignition of the arc. So the secondary windings had to be connected in series to increase the total voltage. As a result, the current will be half as much. Well, what can you do? Now, let's check the operation of the adjustment system. The clamps show the welding current. The device is loaded on a ballast resistor. In my case, the current adjustment starts from 10A. It's quite smooth, despite the fact that the variable resistor I have has less resistance than needed. At currents of 75 to 80A, the transformer starts to overheat and smell. Otherwise, the control system. In this configuration, it can easily be used for currents of 200 and even more. Well, now, let's start welding. But before that, I want to apologize for the poor welding. I'm not a welder, guys, and this is, you could say, my second time welding in my life.
About safety measures. I did all the setup work with a safety incandescent lamp of 300W, which was connected in series with the primary winding of the transformer. During the power tests, I replaced the lamp with a 20A circuit breaker. After struggling through and burning three electrodes, I realized that the transformer was terribly overheated. After all, it's not meant for this. But our task was to test the regulation system, and it works quite well. Ideally, the device also needs a choke. It should help with arc ignition and compensate for insufficient resistance, thereby stabilizing the welding current. In the near future, a video on winding a choke will be released. Well, I suppose we'll fully assemble this device and see what difference the choke makes. And without it. While we're at it, I'll mention that videos on making welding inverters will be coming out soon. A couple of them are almost assembled, I just need to overcome laziness and create the videos. I remind you that all necessary links can be found in the description. Don't forget to rate this video and subscribe to my Instagram. And with that, I just have to say goodbye. As always, this was Kazian K with you. And until next time, bye.